Welcome to the Soul Full Podcast. I am your host, Megan Harmony, a champion at overcoming the tough stuff and enjoying life while rising above it. Soulful living means getting to a place of ease and comfort, no matter what's happening around you. It is waking up excited about what adventures you will go on. It's connecting to the power within you as your source of strength, grace, and security. It's being uncomfortable during growth spurts and leaning into the stretch. Each week, I will share with you about my journey and the experiences I have had. I'll offer you hope and inspiration that it is possible to live a full life even when the you-know-what is hitting the fan. I believe that love is a language we can all understand, and I want to inspire you to trust and believe in yourself. Your soul is hungry for more. Lean in to get soul full. Good morning. I have had a whirlwind of a week and I can't wait to get into the nitty gritty of this week's episode, but I want to first share with you guys some of my whirlwind. So I have available copies of The Great Canadian Woman, She is Strong and Free, inspirational stories from incredible women who have overcome some of the most difficult circumstances in life. And I've been busy getting that out into the world, talking to different newscasts and different things like that, trying to promote the book. And so far, everyone seems very interested. And I've also been selling copies of my other best-selling books, two best-selling books in October, like, oh, so powerful. The other one is called It's Okay to Not Be Okay. And it's stories from people who have struggled with mental health concerns and have either gotten the treatment necessary to live with those concerns or have overcome them. And they're very powerful, inspirational stories reminding people that it's okay to not be okay and to be okay with that for a few moments. So if you're interested in either of those books, please reach out to me on any of my social media. Let me know you want a copy and we can discuss all the details of how I can get a signed copy mailed to you. On top of that this week, I've just been go, go, go. I've been signed on to another book, um, which is going to be Powerful Stories of Women. And I'm currently writing my solo book. I'm looking into speaking engagements and all kinds of exciting things. So keep your eyes open in the near future as all those things start to develop and come into the world. There's lots to share with you guys, many ways to be supportive. And I just am so revved up. So why I'm excited to get into this week's episode is this podcast is going in a little bit of a new direction. Nothing major is going to change. It's still going to be me sharing with you and giving you tidbits to help you throughout your week. But I want to start each episode off. Um, Before the episode starts, I draw a card for you guys because this is one of my gifts is really being intuitive with the cards. And I think it's going to really benefit you guys throughout your week. So this week's card is from the Work Your Light Oracle deck by Rebecca Campbell. And the card is Keepers of the Earth. You are not alone ancient ancestors stand before you. And this has been coming up a lot for various different people this week, different things about ancestors and guides and how supported we really are. So the reading for this card is, you are so supported. You do not stand alone. You have a magnificent team of helpers, both in this world and of the earth, who are here to help you every step of the way. Call upon them for assistance. They are here to help. The keepers of the earth acknowledge the work that you have done already and are ready to work through you. They bow at your feet and thank you for wanting to stand for them, to devote your life to protecting the earth in your unique way. It is time to increase your capacity to receive support in the physical realm. This can come in the form of financial abundance, acts of service from strangers, or people flocking to help you and your work. The only thing that is stopping you right now is your capacity to receive support. You deserve to be rewarded for the work that you are doing. You do not need to go at it alone. Call upon the keepers of the earth to help you and your mission. Open your heart and your mind to receiving more than you ever thought possible. What kind of support do you need? Call it in right now. And your work your light activation for this week, guys, is... I am open to receiving a whole new level of support for my life and my work, and I call it in now. 
and then include for yourself any specific requests you have for the universe, your guides, the earth keepers, just anyone that is there to support you. And there is so much support all around you. And then say, thank you, thank you, thank you. I think it's important that we remember we are so supported, even when it feels like we're not. And I'll get into that in a few minutes. But there is so much, so much in this universe that we just don't even understand, fathom, or comprehend. And lately, I am getting information from the angels and information from the fairies and the unicorns and the guides. And just so many downloads are coming to me right now. And the big thing that I think all of you need to hear right now is you are not alone. Even if it feels like you're alone, even if it's brutally painful, you are supported. There may not be someone there in physical presence to give you a hug, but I'm telling you, you are not alone. The divine is with you always. Whether you call that God, Gaia, Goddess, Buddha, Allah, doesn't matter what you call your higher power or higher vibration in this world. It is always with you. The light is always there because it's within you. You are the light. Don't ever forget that. We came to earth of the light. We will probably leave this presence of the light. Like just, you are supported. So when you feel like you're alone and you feel like you're not supported, just ask for help. Even if you just lie on your couch, paralyzed with fear or hurt or anguish and say, help me. And this actually takes me back to a story probably about five years ago now. I don't know the timeline exactly, but it was when I was living in a different residence just before where I live now. And a lot of things had come down in my life and I ended up, um, just sobbing uncontrollably on the couch, just uncontrollably sobbing. And the only thing I could possibly do to get through it was say, help me please, I need help. I can't keep going like this. And my life started to take a whole new trajectory as long as I continued to ask for help. Because the minute we request what we need, the support shows up in forms of different people, different teachings, different books, different whatever. It, it comes into our life, but we have to ask for what we need. Because if we're not willing to ask for what we need to support ourselves, The universe can't really give us, I mean, it can give us things, but we won't be awake and aware enough to realize we need it. So as I'm saying that, this leads me to another story, which is I was taking part in a business um, training this week that was being offered by a well-known entrepreneur. And um, it was to learn something I needed to learn for my business. And I was doing the homework threads because in typical Megan fashion, I get involved in things and I do the work because that's just how my brain works. And on Halloween night, I got a treat provided to me by the universe because I've received a scholarship to their year long um, not mastermind incubator, business incubator. And I wasn't expecting that. It was just a complete shock and surprise. I still am kind of processing it all. But why I say that is, I know the areas where I need support and so that's why I was doing this training is just to kind of learn a skill I didn't have yet and because I asked for help in the homework threads to understand things and whatever, they recognized me as somebody that they want to be able to help further and so speak up for what you need, right? If I had just sat there and been like, oh, whatever and not answered or asked questions, I ask a lot of questions, guys, because I want to understand things and Um, to really try to implement things into my life, especially on a free training. Like I I do ask a lot of trick questions because I know the free training is going to end. And so anyways, all of that to say the universe is always carrying us forward with full support, even when we're not quite sure the direction we need to go. Because I've been a little chaotic lately trying to kind of figure things out and and, um, know which direction to go in and and even though I'm asking, I'm not necessarily hearing the answers or, or whatnot. So, um, yeah, just show up, show up, do the work, ask for help, things show up. So I can get a little vulnerable with you guys and gals, right? I can share some vulnerable truth and uh, not feel judged. 
and that's kind of a trick question because I'm always teaching you guys not to feel judged or worry about what anyone else thinks. I said that last week, what anyone else thinks of you is not your business, right? So that was a, that was kind of a joke. Anyways, um, I am going to get a little vulnerable with you guys. So earlier this week, after a huge download of, for myself and some self-awareness of the root cause of one of the struggles I've been dealing with for quite some time now, um, I was sobbing on my couch again. I think it might even be the same couch from five years ago. No, no, it's a new one. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, sobbing, just sobbing. And this time it wasn't the same. I wasn't paralyzed with fear. I wasn't, I was just sobbing at how much this has held me back from really supporting those of you that really need it. And how much this has held me back from being my true self. And so I want to share with you guys what led to me doing this. I was having a conversation with one of my family members. And um, short and the long of it is, these words came out of my mouth. And, and I actually went back and reread them because I, I had to really process them in order to get into the action steps to heal, the, to, to pull out the root of the belief system that's been keeping me stuck and the fear that's been keeping me stuck to get into the action that has brought me to this place of being, feeling fully aligned right now and able to support those of you who need and want my support in the ways in which I'm meant to. So here's the messages. And I'm going to be real and honest, so just bear with me. My connection to my higher power dissipated when my last relationship did, partly because I had put that person in the position God should have been in in my life. Partly because I doubted everything that I thought I had felt was God's will or direction, so I didn't trust myself and my connection anymore. And partly because I was pissed off at and blaming God because I thought he had given me everything I'd ever wanted and then took it all away. I was embarrassed and humiliated and blamed God. It wasn't God. It never is. But I've struggled to reconnect ever since. I try a little, but I don't do my disciplines, I guess, out of fear, because I'm afraid if I do do them every day, I will regain that same closeness to God I once had and then lose it all again. I'm afraid of the freedom I once had from doing the daily disciplines and the absolute faith and trust I had in and with God before I met my last partner. I'm afraid of God's love and care because sometimes that means people and things are no longer meant for us because God has an even better plan and those growing pains hurt like hell so I stay stagnant where even though it's painful, it's a pain I know and have grown comfortable in. And like I said, I went back and reread those messages and just it brought me to tears partially tears of joy because awareness is a huge part of moving forward. But in that moment while I was crying, I started to feel single. And I use the term single, not in relationship sense, but because I don't want to use the term alone because as the message earlier was, I especially lately have been feeling so much support from past loved ones and different things like that, that I don't think we're ever truly alone. So I wasn't feeling alone, I was feeling single and not, like I said, relationship single, just on my own. Not alone, but on my own in the physical realm. And so because of that, I did immediately what I knew I needed to do and I reached out to a friend because I saw they were online and I discussed kind of what had just transpired because I needed to get into somebody that has the headspace I have about growing forward. And we had a beautiful discussion about how now that I had the awareness, I could move into the action steps. And I've been doing the action steps and I'm feeling so much better and so much more aligned and more and more connected to that, which is that which I call God, to the light, to the divine, to my wild essence. It just, I've taken such huge leaps and bounds in just a few days and hours that I know this is possible for each and every one of you to connect that part of your soul that lights the world on fire.
And what's interesting about this is even though I haven't been 100% connected, I still remained connected because of the deep belief and practices I do that keep me on that path of growing and spirituality and transcending and elevating because that's what I desire for my life and the life of those around me. That, and I have a daughter that is a huge spiritual teacher for me on every level, every day. So, I mean, there's that too. But if you don't have children that are teachers for you, I'm sure you have people in your life that give you hope and inspire you. So stay close to those people. Because in those times of trial and, and despair or disconnection, there's still a connection there. The, the connection never disappeared. Like, um, I can't remember exactly what I said in that one text. And I don't have it in front of me right now. But when I said that, like, I'm afraid of all those fears are irrelevant because you never lose your connection to God or your higher self or your true self or your soul. It's always there. We might turn it off for a bit or put our finger up and pretend to like hide from it or, or be mad and not want to talk to it. But the connection is always there and it's always carrying us forward and it's always holding us in a safe space, even when we feel like we're falling apart. And I just want to tell you that you are so loved by yourself. I said this last week too, first and foremost, by yourself, even when you feel like you hate yourself. Um, one of the things that came to mind that night was I hated myself for loving different people in my life because I just did in that moment. And then I realized, no, I don't hate myself. I, I, I appreciate every experience I've had in life because it has led me to this place where I'm able to support each of you. And so much growth has come from every experience. It's, it's been beautiful, but you know, it's, it's part of the journey. But in that moment, I was, you know, in that fear, ego-based mind of hating myself for loving them. And, and I went, no, I love myself for loving them because I've been able to unconditionally love some of the most, what others have told me were unlovable people. I think everyone on the world in the world is lovable. I think everyone has good in them. My father has told me I wear rose-colored glasses my entire life and that not everyone is good. Some people are just bad people. I don't believe that. I believe everyone is innately good but they've had experiences and situations and upbringings and different things that have brought them to a place of forgetting the good within them. And I have this insane ability to bring that forward for people. So many people have come into my life for a period of time, like, you know, people come for a season and I love on them and I love on them and I love on them and I give them unconditional love and accept them for who they are and, and show them the good within them. And when they leave my life, um, for various different reasons, um, just to go on to their next level of, of um, growth. They leave more transcended, more loving and caring of themselves. And time and time again, contact me later to say, I became a better person just by knowing you. And, and it shows in those past people I've dated, their next relationship is always a much better relationship and they treat that person with so much love and adoration and respect. And it's, it's a, and again, from the outside looking in, I'm not there, but from what I've been told or seen, they become that man I always knew they could be. And I'm so grateful that I get to be that person in people's lives that loves them for who they are, just enough for them to learn to love themselves. And I want to do that for each of you. Know that you are beautiful. Know that you are worthy. Know that you are deserving of an epic freaking life. Don't hesitate to believe that. And if you struggle to believe that, please reach out to me on social media. Let's talk and I can help you see all the wonderful things about yourself that you just aren't even aware of in this moment because you're so blocked by the fear and the hurt and the pain and the things you've made mistakes on and you're letting yourself stay stuck in those things. Those things are not who you are. They are not your character. They are not your being. You are a light. Even if you don't think so, I know so. The guides are telling me right now that someone who is listening to this podcast needs to hear that you are an incredible being, that you deserve to be loved, that you are love. 
Hear me again when I say that. You are love. All of your being, every cell in your body, every DNA, RNA, every breath you take is love. That is the light of this world is love. It is of you. It is you. Don't hesitate to accept that because you are worthy. You are amazing. I don't know why this is coming through so strong right now, but to whoever is listening that needs to hear this, please reach out to me after this episode or even pause it right now. Send me a message and let's talk because I want you to know that an epic life is waiting for you, but you have to tell yourself you love yourself. And I know it's not easy. I know it's hard. I've been where you are where you didn't feel worthy, where you thought everything you'd done in the past made you this horrible human being and you didn't even see the point in trying because you're just doomed to a horrible life because you are a horrible person and I am here to tell you that is not true. That is your dark side and your shadow side trying to keep you in the shadows and it is time to crack that open. Crack it open. Happiness can be found in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. That is from one of my favorite movies, one of the Harry Potter films or books, both. I love the books and the movies. Um, and, And I love that quote because we just have to turn on the light and the light is within us. It's in your heart space. It's in your soul space. It's, it's of you, but you have to turn it on. And the way to do that is to connect with yourself, to love on yourself, to do things that bring you joy. And I kind of got off track here from where I was originally going to go, but I think this is an important message. You are her, you are him. You are that same beautiful baby that came into this world. You're just all grown up now and there's probably some wounds and some traumas and there's some things that have to be cleared out. And that's exactly what I do with people with my Reiki and light healing sessions. We pull that stuff out of you. We clear it. We make it feel better. And I pray every day for people like you to believe in themselves in the ways in which I believe in you. And for those that don't need to hear all of that right now, just know that you need to hear that right now or the universe wouldn't have had me say it. I love you all so much, but let's continue on here. So continuing on, as I was going through this whole phase over the last probably 10 years now, Different people have said a lot of things to me and a couple of things stick out. So I want to share them with you guys. I have been told before over the last few years since that relationship ended and those text messages came out where I haven't really been staying at my best connection to self and higher power. That I have more spirituality in my pinky finger than some do in their entire being even when I'm at my minimal capacity. And why I share that with you is because that is true of all people. None of us are better than or less than. I'm not better and don't have more spirituality. It just exudes out of me because it's part of my being and who I am. But the thing is, it's exuding out of you too. You just aren't awake to it yet. You haven't recognized it yet. You don't realize that you are a spiritual being, that you are meant to connect to the fifth and sixth and seventh dimensional realms that you are incredible and that you are so awesome because we ourselves are the sunlight of the spirit we are the light keepers we are all angels we are unicorns we are fairies we are all those things combined because the universe is in our souls the stars the galaxies the suns the moons that's why the cycles all affect us that's why so many people are waking up right now because it is time for the world to wake up to get connected to that awareness that we are all divine we are all the god light we are meant to change the world for the better peace is going to come i don't know when i don't know how i just know it's coming because more and more of us are waking up and as we awaken we stand in love we stand in peace we stand in transparency and transcendency 
and we make the world a brighter place. A few years ago, probably seven now, I received a letter once from someone that I used to know. And I will spare you all the details, but I realized that I do want to share one line with you guys because I think this was said about me, but again, I believe this to be true of all of us. You, at your 75%, are 100% everything anyone could ever dream to be. At your 100%, you will surely transform into pure light. As they have seen us at what they believe is 85%, and we glided with an 18-inch glowing hue surrounding our whole being. And when others came close to it, it engulfed them as well. Now hear that again. You at your 75% are 100% everything anyone could ever dream to be. At your 100%, you will surely transform into pure light. Those that have seen us at 85% and we glided with an 18-inch glowing hue sur surrounding our whole being. And when others come close, it engulfs them as well. When you let your light shine bright, you shine it onto others and it sparks a light in them and then that transcends. And just think of the ripple effects that happen when we stand in our truth, in our light, in our glory, and we let others know that we are here and we are the light and we are not afraid to shine, shine, shine. Get your shine on, guys. Please, please get your shine on because the world needs you. The world needs your light. The world needs you to trust yourself. The world needs you to know that you are a badass that can make the world a better place. You need only believe. I have a friend who speaks in light language and intrinsically it calls to me. I too speak it, just not yet in this earth, earthly realm. We all speak it because we are all made to be born of the light. And if you don't know what light language is, um, you can look it up online. It's this, and, and I don't even know if there's examples of it online, but it's this beautiful um, otherworldly talk and it's, it's beautiful and it's gorgeous. And when she speaks it, my whole body tingles. And it's because, as I've said all throughout this episode, we are all made of the light and light language speaks to that part of us that is of the light that is not yet awakened. So if you ever get the opportunity to hear someone speak light language, get in that realm, feel that, trans let it open you up. And why I know I speak it just not in this earthly realm is that same friend of mine posted something on social media and it had some light language in the text. And I messaged her, I said, is that light language? And she said, yes. And I, I was trying to tell her what I kind of wondered what it meant and just different things. But it's I knew it was light language just to see it because we are all of the light and we all speak light language. We just don't necessarily say it out loud yet. And it's this beautiful loving language because as I've said, everything is love. Everything is love. You are love. The tree is love. The dog is love. The desk is love. Everything is love. And everything material and everything relational is here to us on loan. It's not ours. Nothing is mine. I might think it's mine, which then tends to lead me to 12-step inventory because if I think something is mine, that means I think I have ownership of it. It means I think I should keep it forever. And that leads me to a path of sadness if it leaves or control if it stays so for me I have to look at those things but it's here to us on loan and therefore if it has to go God bless you go in peace thank you for your time in my life and the lessons we grew together and with all that I want to close with a mantra to carry you through the coming week this mantra is from The Universe Has Your Back Deck by Gabby Bernstein, and it's oneness is my true nature. So if you guys get an opportunity, write that out, put it on your mirror, put it on a post-it note at your desk, put it wherever. Oneness is my true nature. And that's kind of ironic that that's the card we got because 
oneness is our true nature, and that has truly been the theme of this week's episode. I hope you have an absolutely incredible week this week, guys. I hope that you the light carries you. And again, if you need me, if you need support, if you need to talk, or if you just want to catch up and have an amazing conversation, please reach out to me on social media for any of the things we've discussed today. I'm here in your corner. I believe in you. I support you. And you are amazing. Don't ever forget it. Take care until next time. Until we meet again, lean in to get soulful. Thank you for meeting me soul to soul today on the Soulful Podcast. If this episode connected with you and you feel called to, please share it with your friends and family so they can feel the love as well. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe on your podcast player so you get notified when new episodes drop. Please leave a rating and comment so I know what's touching your soul the most and can bring you more of what you long for. If you have suggestions for topics or would like me to speak at your event, please connect with me at S-O-U-L-F-U-L-L S-O-B-R-I-E-T-Y at gmail.com. Thank you for your love and support in helping me connect with more souls to remind them they are divine, capable, and loved. You're the best. Go out looking at the world through the lens of love.